from because you're going to just take all this information and, and fill out a contract. Um, I, you know, I went to real estate school. We all know now uh, if we have it, you learn really quickly. Everything you learn in real estate school is nothing about real estate. So <laughs> you get here and you go through all the classes and you, you, you take all this great information and you're absorbing your little sponge, you've got no card, you're trying to retain it all. And then you get in my first situation, it was time for me to write a contract. And I was like literally breaking into sweat because I was like, oh my gosh. And you and most of all, you don't want your client to know like they're your first. Like that's what people say, like, oh, we'll be like, I have to pretend like I know what I'm doing. Like I, I don't have I don't want to have any ambiguity. So here I am uh, sitting at the White Castle in Shelbyville, right off the exit, writing handwriting uh, a contract. So I would like to tell you that you know you're going to have all this time and that you're going to be able to just whip out a laptop and always be able to type it up. And that's not you got to be able to do it on the fly. And that's why I even did when I had them done one and so long by hand. Uh, my hand was hurting, but uh, when we go over the contract. Uh, that I that I did with all the answers I did it by hand because I've literally I've sat outside the house before, showed it for the house that office had to be in a six, and I'm like literally like, and then when you get down some of these locations like you show in Taylorsville, some places in Shelbyville they're getting better, Spencer County getting better, but like you're you're gonna have spotty Wi-Fi and you're gonna show houses that you pray your your Bluetooth uh, key works on your phone because like literally like you're just praying that you can get into the super because you don't always have. So it's best to handwrite and get used to that because if you get used to only how it looks on the computer screen or your laptop, you may not always have that convenience. And every smartphone <coughs> doesn't have a nice, cushy air conditioning Starbucks. Um, you just <laughs> need that uh, be able to handle the pressure. I've, I've got to sit here in front of my client. And, and, and so it was a lot for me. So if you practice, you know, it's like everything else with scripts. When you practice doing this, then you don't have to, the, honestly, I, I was hiding that I had a cheat sheet contract with everything highlighted, and I was trying to hide that from my clients, and this was the absolute first contract that I've ever written, and I didn't want them to think I was an idiot. So, yeah, that was my experience. The second one I wrote was at the McDonald's in Shelbyville on the other side of the exit. So, um, we put together this class in hopes of just giving you some comfort zone and some good practice and you're always willing to or you're all you know take it make tons of copies have a cheat sheet highlight because that you know until you get really used to it i just used to think this seven page contract it took me forever to do something dot like my first one or my third one that i actually tried to do a dot like i was like oh my gosh and then you're trying to type it all out and that took hours too so uh, hopefully this will eliminate some of that and again um, practice is always great so this is your checklist for preparing an offer you will get really good at all this really fast um, the more you do it uh, i'm just going to start off right now in this market you have no business uh, showing properties that somebody that will not take time to get pre-approved the market's moving too fast you know houses are on the on the market a day or two and you're going to show them a house that potentially they can't buy and they think they can have time to talk to a lender, it's going to be gone the next day. Okay, don't waste your time. If they're not willing to have a 15 minute conversation with a lender, it's not fair for you to take them out on a Saturday for three or four hours and show them houses. You know, and, and people with good head on their shoulder uh, should understand that. You know, it's like taking somebody shopping and they don't have money. And it's not fair. I, I, you know, I ran into so many, I did so much wrong. Um, uh, you know, we're trying to prevent that. But I took a whole Saturday and showed buyers in three different counties, seven houses, and they didn't get pre-approved. Now you think that's just, you know, but you may just do it all the time because you're so, you want business and you're so hungry for business and you want to build rapport and you need somebody that'll trust you and they like you. So if you drive to three different counties all outside of Jefferson, and and then you find out at the end of the day that the eight, that the lender gets back with you and it's like yeah they're going to have to go on credit repair and they're about four to six months out. So don't do that kind of stuff. It's not fair to you. Um, get that pre-approval letter um, first and foremost. Uh, prepare a CMA. Now I don't do this anymore because I don't have time to do this anymore. But I'm also. Um, <laughs> It depends 
on the property, if you, you have a little more high, yeah, more time with higher end properties, like maybe over 350. But if you're working that farm time home buyer and they're under 250 or under, and it's moving condition right now in the market, it's selling so fast. But what happens with experience, I can look at a house almost. I watch the hot sheet all day, every day from my phone. I see this listing, how fast it's pending at the end of the day, what's closed what it got listed for and what it sold for. So I'm, I'm getting, I'm experienced enough to say, if a house list like, comes up and I, I, I say, there's something wrong with this, it's underpriced. There, I'm looking at the zip code, bedrooms, bathrooms, you know, basement, square footage, and I'm like, what's wrong with this? The next thing I do is, it's, my guess is it's either in a flood zone or it's being sold as is, okay? And sure enough, Probably 95% of the time I scroll down and it's either in a flood zone or people. But that's how well you need to get the market. You know, you might not always have to do CMA, but I can kind of round about within 10,000, uh, you know, with this house you go for, what they're selling for, and that kind of thing. So familiarize yourself with the market. Um, while you're getting experience, do a CMA, figure out what the house should be selling for because you need to educate your buyer. Um, check the tax record uh, for assessed value. If you don't know how to yet, um, get used to pulling up the PBA and look at the taxable value. Okay, now we all know the taxable value may not have anything to do with what the house we live for. My taxable value on my personal house right now is $50,000 less than what I would put it on the market for if I list my house tomorrow. Okay, but thank goodness. Uh, they had just had to reassess. Now, four homes in my neighborhood have sold this year. They might, you know, but that PBA, that tax record comes off of, you know, what's happened in your area and as tax values go up and they can like kind of reassess. But I don't want to pay taxes, <laughs> you know, higher taxes. So I don't care what they value in my house. But you just want to look at that, understand how to look at the PBA and, um, and offer that, uh, that knowledge for your clients. And I'm included, this, this packet right here has everything you're gonna need and it has uh, it has everything printed out for you, okay? The next thing is check the MLS history for price changes. If it's been on the market a while, why, what did it start off at? Um, what's it showing now? Check County Clark's site for uh, lace pendants against the property. So you might want to go in and make sure that it's not you're ready to get into foreclosure mode, that there's not liens against it, okay? I have an admin that does that for me. So, you know, if you're on a team, that can, that can be a benefit. Uh, and then contact the listing agent. Now, I'm gonna tell you, um, Establishing a rapport with the listing agent if you're working with buyers and you're getting ready to write an offer. It, to me, somebody who's a social person and wants to have, I need that connection, you're gonna go a lot for If I'm a listing agent, if you reach out and call me, you're communicating with me, you're texting me, it's gonna go a lot further than, I've honestly had people put offers on my listings and I just happen to go check my email there's an offer. Mm -hmm. They didn't call me, didn't text me, they didn't give me a heads up. Are you kidding me? You know, I don't have time to check my email a hundred times a day. I check my text. Mm -hmm. uh, but you need to know that the best thing you can do is establish rapport or credibility with that listing agent. Reach out and say, hey, just showed up your property, it went to your main street, my buyers are really interested, we're discussing an offer. Um, I'm going to send you something over when I send it, is text okay or do you want a phone call back? Most of us are so busy. We say, oh yeah, just send me a text. I mean, that's in my email. I'll verify. Okay. But contact the listing agent. Um, make sure before you show it that the property is still available. Again, I have shown the house that they did not tell me that they just accepted a contract on. Are your buyers mad at you? Yeah. Oh, it, it's horrible, and I know you wouldn't think that happened. I mean, every freshman, first six months, first year mistake you can make, let me just say it. Because I was on a running gun team, we were high producing, and you just went out show, 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 you know, just wrote, 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 and it was crazy all the time. And um, So call that agent and make sure, 
I did, there was a house we were getting, I was getting ready to do the show, somebody went one last Wednesday, and then I pull it up to get the directions and they mark it pending. That, and that agent, you know, not every listing agent out there, some of them are lazy. They don't always uh, cancel your showing. They don't always give you a courtesy call. And would my people have been upset, me too, frustrated in this market if I drove all the way up from there, showed them the house, showed them the property, and then pulled it up and it's pending. So, you know, make sure that it's available. Um, let the listing agent know that you'll be writing an offer, establish rapport, find out more about the seller, uh, talk with the listing agent if he or she is ex uh, expecting other offers. And that's a big one. What do you got going on right now? Now, agents will say, I talked to someone, they're supposed to be sending something over. But we all know, I've had, I've had people tell me they were sending something and changed their mind. So really, until it's in hand, you can't count on it, but they should. Most of them are good, and if they communicate, they'll say, I've had a lot of showings all day, a lot of interest, nothing in hand yet. They're interested in getting something as soon as possible. Um, find out if there's any other offers, if any offers have fallen through, uh, to find out the reason. So if it's, especially if it's back on market, uh, I'm like, what, what happened? And especially if they don't know. If the finances offer. If it was repairs, have that conversation. What scared off the other people? Where were you? Sometimes people just find out they did cold feet, they didn't get an inspection. You know, lots of things can happen. So just having that conversation with the listing agent on behalf of your buyer is going to go home. It's going to go really, really far. Um, check with the agent uh, what may be important to the seller. It's not always about price. It's not. If they're in a if they're in a family situation and they've got um, maybe a sickness going on or a crisis and they're not sure how they can move, they might want uh, the most important thing to them might be five days delayed possession. They've got an infant, you know, they're dealing with tragic situations and they're just like, oh my gosh, we need to close, but we gotta move. And, that, you know, we're behind schedule. And if your people can give delayed possession, but say nobody else can, that might not be the most attractive thing on the offer. Not that you go over uh, asking price. Does that make sense? I'm talking really fast. Does anybody have questions? Just stop me and throw up your hand. On <laughs> a uh, house coming back into the market, uh -huh. but who was, if, if I'm to put it into the listing, like if I've got a house that, that I thought was going to close, did close, financing fell through, whatever, uh, <laughs> would it? Can I put that in the? No, oh, always do. Okay. Let's say. And financing. I change it. Financing fell through. Right. Bring me an offer. Sellers are ready to go. Good. You know, that kind of whatever. Because I don't want people to think there's something wrong with the house. Correct. Right. 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 Okay. And sometimes if you go to, now the most important thing is read agent notes. Nobody reads agent notes, but that's where you find out all your information. Yeah. And I've made a million mistakes that I couldn't have made or shouldn't have made if I would have known early on to read the agent notes. Because a lot of times the agent notes are where they put it. They might not put it in the listing part, but they'll put financing fell through or uh, sellers had an inspection, right on came back high, buyer, or, sell, or buyers had an inspection, right on came back high. Uh, it, you know, sellers are willing to fix, but it freaked the buyer out. If that's not gonna freak your buyer out, then say, hey, let's go get this house. So, you know, whatever. Sometimes in the agent notes, it's gonna say, uh, all offers are being reviewed on Sunday at noon. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's Sunday at one, and you're trying to fly your people out there and get them in the house, guess what? You didn't read, didn't read agent notes. And um, <laughs> I've gotten caught up on all these. Believe me, there's nothing the little guy has been wrong. <laughs> just you live and learn, and, and just never, you'll never do it again, I swear. <laughs> you, lose, right? you, lose, you lose a client because you can read agent notes. Like, I showed a house, and it was like, Closing time frame. You 
can get with real good lender, and I'm sure you're on the team, so Melanie's going to have some, but and understand how quickly you can close. If they're working with one of my top three preferred lenders, and I know they can get them closed, I will put a specific day on that contract. Just look at the calendar, try not to close on the Friday of the last, or the last Friday of the month. They're really, really busy. If, if they're willing to close on a Monday, count out 35 days and put in a specific day. Because if it's a good, strong lender, a good, strong buyer, they can get you closed on a specific day. And if that house, especially if it's, sell, if it's sitting empty, they are going to be able to, I mean, you can be like, yeah, my people are good to go. Here's my lender, here's their letter. We're closing in 35 days. As opposed to, and Brad used to teach us, I was saying he still has, as opposed to that time frame, 30 to 45 days. Mm -hmm. And everybody's wiggling around. Is it gonna be 30, is it gonna be 40, is it gonna be 45? Now, you have to put that in there sometime when you're closing multiple properties and there's some contingencies and stuff. But if you have, especially a person that doesn't have a house to close uh, or sell first, they're that first time home buyer, or this is a investment property or a second home, a lake house, put that specific day in there. It always makes the offer stronger. It makes the offer stronger if they're not asking for anything. So if they don't need closing costs, they have their own prepaids, uh, it's gonna be a stronger offer than, you know, sellers can't get, they, or buyers can't get a delayed possession, they need $5,000 from the seller for closing costs, they want a home warranty, they want the swing set and the pool and all the appliances, <laughs> and they, you know, it's just ongoing. The less they're, they're wanting to ask for in this, in this market especially, the better off. If I got an offer in, yesterday, there were four offers. I thought there's no way. My people went and bid over, and I knew we had a few thousand dollars that would appraise and we'd be okay. We gave them what they were asking for. We went 550 over because we wanted a $550 uh, home warranty, and it was a big A loan, which a lot of people view them as not as strong as. Of course, nothing beats cash, and then your best, the second best option is conventional. And I was like, "There's four offers. There's no way we're getting this." And that agent called me and said, "We got the, we got it." I was shocked. But they didn't ask for anything. They didn't they ask for closing costs. The house that they had to sell, the appraisal was ordered on Friday, so we were through inspection. Mm -hmm. They were on the market. You know, we're 30 days out from closing their house. It was, it was full price. Um, they went with our so you just never know. Motivation um, and the seller's most pressing needs. Like I said, if the house is empty, then you're probably gonna. They just need to sell it. They need clothes because they're paying their commission to it right now. You know, they want you in. They want somebody with a strong lender. Um, also, lately I've been asking if they prefer a specific closing attorney. Okay, I have my favorites, but. You never know. If somebody else prefers to, I mean, their uncle might work at Pitt and Frank. It, it's, the, it's the buyer's choice. But if your buyer doesn't care and that seller might, mm -hmm. then that sweetens the deal. Mm -hmm. You know, so I ask the agent, do they have a preference? You know, I like to close the borders. Um, that's what I use a lot of not being my way in Florida. But do your people have a preference? Yeah, hurry, it works at limestone. Okay, we're closing the limestone. I mean, it, it, again, as long as your buyers don't have that connection and they just say, we trust you, find a good, uh, you know, find a good closing attorney, then I'll, I'll write that in and sweeten the deal. Will it matter? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might. Uh, so I, you know, again, and that's a question that I always ask. But talk as much as you can, get as much out of that listing agent as you can, because you're writing that offer, and a lot of times you only have one chance. And in this market, they're not coming back and negotiate. You have to tell your people, we just need to present our best offer right now. And don't think they're going to come back. That, especially if they have four offers, they don't have time to say, not this market. Right. Uh, a lot of times we'll say, send me your best. Send me your last best because we're not going to negotiate. We're not going to come back and tell everybody. Because we're doing the offers at 4 o'clock on Sunday right after the open house. Send us your last and best. And I'll just tell my people, what's this house worth? You. What are we going to go in? And are you, are you okay? You get it or don't get it at this price? They have to be the ones that lay their head down and sleep at night. So 
and uh, that's another thing. Don't recommend the price to them. You know, if you think they should go over, uh, you might recommend that. It still has to have praise. But ultimately, I say it's your decision. You know, if you recommend something and they don't get the house, they're going to be mad at you. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you recommend something, they get the house and they start questioning, like, well, man, she just paid on commission. And I bet she wanted me to go over. And I wonder how much over I went, you know, compared to the other offers. I had, I had guys who go 3000 over and they did, and they got it. And they're always like, I wonder how, you know, it, you just, you can't win in that situation. And so I say, guys, look, the market, you've seen it, you've lost out of an offer. You need to make a strong offer. They have three others. So basically, I'm advising you right now. I think it'll appraise for a little more. You need to make an offer that you yourself can live with. If you get the house, awesome. But if you don't, you know in your heart of hearts that you're okay with that because you gave your best offer. It puts everything back on them. You take no responsibility. You advise, you tell them that it's going to appraise and we should be. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm talking a lot again. What kind of questions do you want to ask? <laughs> Anything? So I won my house now with a letter, right? Wrote a letter with the offer. I figured that that's a no-no, that we should not put letters in with, with the offer. Um, yeah, so I don't know if y'all have taken like the night class, Katie Messenger teaches. Um, she used it all the time. She used to preach, teach letters. And it worked for her. And then one day, Harry Borders came into our um, team meeting, and he was like, "No, you're crossing over to fair housing because if you present a single mom, it's a less fortunate family." Well, you buy your, you know. Pictures of my kids yeah. on there. Yeah. The whole story. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I'll it's just true. tell you my. I'll just tell you my little secret. I just tell the agent verbally, yeah. like, especially not all agents are talky, they're not, some of them are old school, they barely use their phone. If I get one that I know I've done a good deal with before, uh, had a good cross sell before, uh, you know, whatever, and they're a high eye like me and they talk a lot, you know, I'll just get on the phone and be like, oh my gosh, can you believe this crazy market? Oh my people, I'm just, I, I'm almost about to lose sleep. They, they're going to be homeless. <laughs> they've lost out on three, you know, they got two kids and a dog, and I've got their house in the contract, and they've lost out on three offers. Tell me here. Yeah. You know, and so I didn't send a letter, but I put that in that yeah, listing agent. So when she presents offers, she might say, you know, you know this offer's strong. I've worked with this agent before. And, you know, mm -hmm. they have a family and a dog, two cats and a turtle. And they're all going to be homeless. Right. Is that right? You know, verbally, you can just, you know, and again, in this business, don't burn, burn bridges. There are people that are less desirable to work with. Move on. You know, get done with the transaction. Remember that. Remember what not to do. If you don't like something in a position, say, hey, I'm never going to be that agent because I didn't like this about that. So just be better. But there are going to be agents and lenders that you love. You have to, you'd love to do another cross sell with them. That's going to be great. You want to be that agent. So, yes, technically, according to Harry Borders, that's crossing into um, unfair housing territory, and that whole letter presenting thing can be, you know, not all sellers, they won't, some won't do it. I don't like to put people in that position. I just don't want to come back and be, you know, subject to anything. So, like I said, reaching out and having that conversation with that agent verbally, it's going to weigh a lot. You know, be nice, be friendly, be approachable. Um, some people don't like color wings, but some people love color wings. So, it, you know, unfortunately, just you don't know. You just try to be the best you can, smile, communicate. And especially multiple offers, I try to be that agent that always is getting right back to them, texting right back. I received that offer. Uh, I appreciate your time. Thanks for taking a minute on the phone to talk to me. And I keep, because I want to be in top of their mind. I talk, 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 you know, stay with them. Let them know I'm going to be easy to communicate with. I say I'm on a team. I have a full time admin. Uh, she will be reaching out and helping both of us to stay um, organized through this process and make it as easy as possible. Closing table, 
you know, talk, talk, talk. Um, nobody's ever lost out because they were too friendly. Obtain all required documents such as seller's disclosure, lead based paint. Uh, the property has a homeowners association. So, usually that stuff you can get later, but if it has a, an HOA, you need to know that for your buyer. That's going to come into play on their finances. And another thing you need to know if, you're, if your homeowner is, or your buyer, if they're approved on 150 to buy a home, they might only be able to pay them to buy a 115 condo. So you need to understand that. Just because they buy a $150,000 house doesn't mean, because what happens is that HOA fee is figured into their expenses uh, per month. So let's say they're pre-approved to buy a home for $150,000, but they're looking at a condo now, but the HOA fee is $250. That $250 will be held, uh, will be like uh, on their debt to income ratio. So if your buyer starts switches from a home to a condo, then you need to have a conversation with their lender and their lender need, will keep saying, what's the HOA? What's the HOA? And I'll send it to them once you said they can go up to 120. Well, they can't buy this condo at all. So that's something, again, I, you know, you kind of learn the hard way and, and don't know. So you just figure somebody's free to 150, they're free to 150. Uh, but there are HOAs around town. I've seen them up to four to six hundred dollars a month. I can't even imagine, but <laughs> there are. So we're going to move on. I'm going to let you guys work by yourself a little bit. This pocket right here that I handed out, um, this is everything that we've talked about. And again, if you haven't had a chance to pull any of this, and I don't know where you are in planning or what classes you've taken, but I, we put in here an MSD flood search. There's a PBA, um, there's a seller's disclosure. So you just need to, there's a lead-based paint disclosure. You just need to get real familiar with all those documents and what they look like. But basically what you're gonna do now is you're gonna take this um, front page that I gave you, and this is the criteria you're gonna use to write an offer, okay? The very back of the packet I gave you is a white contract. Okay, don't get freaked out if you haven't looked at this since you took Brad's class or something, or you know you've seen it once. And this is what you're here to learn. So I'm going to give you some time to work on it by yourself, and then I'm going to come in the last few minutes of class, and I'm going to put mine up there, and we'll scroll it over. So. I'm not going to collect it. I'm not the teacher. I will be giving red marks <laughs> and big X's, and only you're going to see your work. Again, this is just helping you. It's practice because we used to just have Brad class and then left it up to you, you to get practice on your own, or if you want a team, maybe you had somebody training you. So I've had a lot of confusion before in the past. Um, if there's something that you don't understand, just let me know. But basically, um, this, this sheet on the top, it's telling you the listing price. It's telling you what you're going to offer. Okay? So you're not making up stuff as you go along. This is actually like you've had a conversation with your buyer, and this is what your buyer needs. So it's, it's figuring out, taking the contract and transferring this information about your personal buyer and where to put it and how to fill out the contract. Okay? There's also an MLS sheet. So you're going to take that MLS sheet and there's going to be some information that you'll need to get off of there. Like, uh, I'll just say very top right hand corner, the MLS number, that's going to be on your MLS sheet. Does everybody know how to work both from their computer and their phone? That's something that I would suggest getting real familiar with. I'm so used to working on the go and on the fly and just being go, 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 that I learned, I probably know the MLS better from my phone than I did the computer. Sitting in my car like, okay, you know, what hit the market today? What can I go out and show them right now? Uh, or writing an offer, like I said, pulling it up on my phone and handwriting it, handwriting it in the car, or McDonald's drive or whatever, wherever you find yourself. So it's just practice. 
but just get used to. You're not always going to have, like I said, the luxury of your laptop and sitting in an air conditioning place and having somebody, you know, sit with you and help you and, and all that kind of stuff. You're just going to have to go on the fly a lot. And for those of you who are on the team, like I'm sure Melanie, you know, you, you know, I had I had my team leader uh, early on, you know, I had them on speed dial and I had them on, you know, speaker. It was like, what goes here? What goes here? And then after like twice, they finally just sat me down and they were like, you're going to do this and present. You're going to do this and present. So I'd have to write it off first and then sit in front of him and then explain line by line. Uh, of that offer. So it was the same way with me. We didn't have this class at the time, but I just, he's like, the only way you're going to learn to do this is, it, is by practice. And I had to explain every line of the, of the contract to him before he would stop reviewing them. But like my first 20 contracts, I had to get reviewed by my team. Um, so and you're not going to always have that luxury, especially if you're working on your own. And the biggest thing I always thought was, I don't want to get sued. I don't want to get sued. <laughs> I don't want to get sued. And just remember, uh, uh, assuming is will get you in a lot of trouble. So if you're not sure, put it in the contract. Be as specific as possible. If you want, you know, a specific refrigerator that's in that house, make sure they understand with your refrigerator. You know, if there's another one in the basement, write it in. You can't be overly assuming that they're going to know because you know, in a contract or something happens lawfully, they're going to just grind that down and say, why didn't you say the orange refrigerator in the basement? You just said, you know, refrigerators. So be as specific as you can. Any questions? You know, feel free to, I'm going to, I'm going to step out and get a drink of water because I've been, been talking a lot. And, you know, this is a lax time. So <laughs> go to the bathroom if you need to, drink, talk between yourself. I don't care. Well, yeah. I think, you know, as far as like the agent name and license number for just make sure you know what you're yeah. So on the MLS there at the bottom, it will tell you who the listing agent is. So you can fill that up at the top. And then I don't care if you make stuff up. I mean this is okay. just your practice. Put your name, your new zero, or, you know, your new number is gonna be seven seven, seven seven seven, you know, uh, you know your cell phone, uh the, the email that you prefer. And then if you have, if you're on a team, you're you're gonna have different teams are different. Sometimes the team lead is the lit, is the primary, and sometimes they're the cold. So, and if you're an individual agent, I don't like to leave anything blank. So me personally, I'll I'll like put in a um, if, if there's a, you know if there's not another agent on the contract with me. Um, yeah, so I think it's it. it. You know, just this is practice. So how about it? Dive in. Um, and I will check back in about 10 minutes. It's going to take you longer than that, probably. Uh, you're going to have about 30 minutes. So I'll just check in in about 10 minutes and just make sure you all don't have any questions or, or need anything. Or, um, I don't want any ambiguity or. Oh my gosh, I'm so lost. Don't be lost. Uh, and then, like I said, if you want copies or extras, you can take with you. We can, I can give you a blank one uh, when we leave. So, anything else before I leave? <clears throat> All right, I'll be back in a minute. I'm not leaving. Thank you. <clears throat>
I'm here. Just gonna let you and and do this. <laughs> you got this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here to answer questions. I know she kind of like let me go at it, and then we can go back and look at it. So hang in. <laughs>
Back. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, 53 buyer must apply for said loan within X amount of days. Standard time frame that you put on there? Um, yeah, so there's a, there's a particular time frame on that. Thing. Oh, then there's a, okay. Um, but technically, uh, if your buyer's pre qualified, um, the lender has a very minimal amount of uh, inspection on them. And they actually have to go and sign the paperwork. 
So that's how many days are given to do that. I usually pick between somewhere between four and seven. It depends on I look at the date and I'm like, I'm like, if it's Friday and two days are going to be on Saturday and Sunday, then you know I might go a little longer because I need to get in and um, talk with the one very time for their mom, you know, the next week. Uh, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Anybody else? Okay, I'll be back here. I have one question. Yeah. Um, I'm down kind of here. Okay. I did them. Do since it's continuing to point out the partner of whoever is doing it, do we check that your other box and open it over there? Um, so on that page, if you read up a little bit, it means there's an extra um, addendum that you're going to give. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, now to be free, I'm going to Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Is there anything you want me to answer a question about before I go? I didn't see a spot for the nail polish. Where, where do I put that? Okay. <clears throat> it's on the first page. Uh -huh. We'll be there very shortly. And your price and terms. Right. So we'll be there real quick. You want me to? No, we're good. Okay. All right. So what did you guys think? Did you know more than you thought? Did you know less than you thought? Did you say this is this I think it was easy, but we'll see if I know. Right. Uh, yeah, no worries. Good job. I did grab contact. I watched it. Um, yeah, we just watched it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, absolutely. And we just try to, with these scenarios, you know, we threw in some, you know, different things that hopefully might be a little bit more challenging. And just, again, it's all about that practice. So you can see this is my handwritten, very scribbly. Uh, I'm doing this on the fly. Um, hopefully, most of your contracts will be on the inquiry and you probably feel them, get them in transaction desk or not leave or whatever you're choosing to, to use right now. But I've gotten, when I'm on the sell side, I've seen it all. I've seen stuff, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm trying to read this handwriting, you know, from this agent. So it is what it is, get her done. Um, so at the top here, you put today's date. Uh, then this is the MLS number from the MLS sheet that I handed out. Um, this particular agent is with EXP. Uh, her name is Phyllis. So you put the name here. This is her license number. Get familiar where to find that on your phone too. Okay. If you go to the MLS, flex MLS on your phone and type in your name, okay, it's going to pull up your information. So like when you go down here to Keller Williams Louisville East, this number, uh, you'll eventually memorize it, but you might not have it memorized right away. So underneath your name, there will be Code Waves Global East with um, brokerage's number <clears throat> on there. So everything you can find is just get familiar where to find it. You're not always going to have time to print out the memo or sheet or, like you said, pull it up on your computer, but your phone's right with you. So that's the best thing to have. Um, when you're in run and go mode for a writing offer. Um, so they don't have a, a co-agent, so I put NA here. And like I said, a lot of times I just try to put NA um, so it's not left blank. Uh, this is me, this is my email. Uh, Santosh, since I'm on his team, um, he's always gonna be my co-agent. And I was in a hurry, I usually uh, would put his if I had all the time in the world, I would put his number and his phone number. But um, again, that's something that as long as yours is on there, you can get, you can get the deal done. It's not going to hold anything up. And um, this down here, it um, if you do it in dot loop or transaction desk, it's going to auto populate the address. Okay, so you just want to make sure, kind of check and make sure that that's right. And did everybody, were you able to find these numbers? The deed book, the page, um, the block plot, and subplot. It was in Jefferson, okay. I'll, I'll give you a heads up, kind of a warning about there are some zip codes that cover more than one, more than one county. So you need to get really familiar with that. Like Prospect um, 40059 is half Odom and half Jefferson. Be really careful when you're setting your buyers up on searches. If they have to be in Odom and you send them a house that's in Jefferson and they fall in love with it and their kids got to be in Odom County Schools, they're not going to be real happy with you. Take it from me. <laughs> <laughs> Take it from the person who learned everything the hard way. The same thing with Pearl 229. That's half Oklahoma and half Bellevue. Okay, straight down Preston. Um, it's the same thing. Do their kids have the same Bullet County schools? Have up it's in Bullet County, have up it's in Jefferson. 
uh, the quicker you learn that kind of stuff. Um, and also, I had a listing that it auto-populated when we went into the MLS and put it in Jefferson, and it was in bullet. And you can get fined for that. So you really have to go in and make sure that that's right with county. And your buyers or your sellers better not, they know what county to live in. So if it auto-populates from the PPA in one county and your buyers are like, no, I live in bullet, you, you know, you take their word for it and you make sure that you can clarify that. Um, I think the very tail end of that might yeah. fall into, um, yeah, if you go straight down to the road. Yeah, it, it's, I think it's slim. There's that, when you're driving it, yeah, there's that. Yeah, there's, mm -hmm. there's that few seconds where, yeah. so yeah, that's a good example too. And I used to teach a class, and I teach my, my new agents, um, learn your zip codes. I don't do anything. Nobody talks in those areas. Like I need a house in area seven, eight, nine. Only realtors talk like that. But everything else is zip codes. And the faster you can learn your zip codes, I know every zip code. Okay, and that's just it builds confidence. The more you know what you're talking about with your clients, then you can have a conversation. It builds clients. And especially if you're cold calling or you're getting leads in off of like a, an ad or something. If you're able to sit down and you know they say I want to be off Dixie Highway. Um, you say, okay, great. Um, you know, I can help with that. Are you talking Dixie Highway 40216, which is mostly like in Shively, you know, north? Or do you prefer PRP 40258 or do you want Valley State for 40272? And they're like, well, really, if it's anywhere. I grew up in that area all my life. If it's a perfect house, I don't mind anywhere off this. But what you just done with that is you let them know you know what you're talking about. And then if you don't, go don't fake it. I mean, just say, hey, I'm not, I'm a I'm a little less familiar. Be honest, because you know, like, is it, I grew up here all my life. Did anybody grow up here all your life? Okay, well, if you did, like, there's just areas of town nobody now talks to you know. You went to high school. Everybody in Mobile will know. You know, where to go to high school? You know that area of town. And if if you're working with somebody who doesn't know that area of town, just show up real quick. And if I know that area town good, oh yeah, my parents used to, you know, you know live out behind the lows of uh, Christen and Outer Loop, and I grew up in that area. Well, you know, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, I know if you want to do, you can, you can talk to talk, that's great. But if you mess up, they know, like, like all right, there you know, you know, that, that restaurant can shut down for a year or, you know, whatever. But just, you know, it's building confidence and rapport. I'm probably the least familiar with Odom County. I know Shelby really well. I know Bullitt very well. I know the Mount Washington area really well. So I'm a little hesitant. I listen a lot when they're talking about the area specific to Odom County they want to be in. You know, Crestwood versus TV Valley versus LaGrange. And I just ask a lot of questions and I'm getting better. Just the best thing you can do, drive around, get a map. There's a map. Um, that I have my agents print out, and we just talk about sections, and I label the zip codes. Okay, um, knowledge is power, and the more you can talk, the just the better people trust you, and you win them over. If you can relate to them, you know, just that's the greatest thing. Any questions before we move on? All right, down here, um, if you'll notice, appliances and additional items to remake. There's an actual place, so I, I always check. And then right here, what people tend to forget about, especially listing agents, is parentheses is there's an S. So technically, if you check that box and there's more than one refrigerator, there's refrigerators, it should cover you getting all the refrigerators associated with that link, whether it's in the garage or the basement. However, we don't want to leave anything obscure or ambiguity, and I overdo it. I would rather clarify as to there be any guessing to this contract. So I always write all appliances currently in the home to remain, including kitchen and basement. There's a refrigerator uh, in the basement. Okay, so <clears throat> did y'all remember seeing that on the sheet? They also want the swing set to remain. Okay, technically the swing set should remain because it's probably attached and drilled to the ground. And, uh, <clears throat> but maybe they want to take it, you know? So you don't want to assume that something like that that could be moved is gonna say that's really important to you and then you show up to do your walkthrough uh, the day before closing and that's when it's gone. 
they're going to be upset. So, and they're going to be upset with you. So make sure I'd rather put overkill and put the swing set to remain. What they want removed from the house, uh, they didn't request anything. But you can, I mean, sometimes it's, I mean, it could be anything. An old shed, it's not going to, it doesn't look like it's going to fare very much longer, you know, it's barely seen enough. You might want them to go ahead and remove that. So uh, anything that you want to, you know, you don't want the pool and it's a, you know, it's an above ground, it can be taken down, then you can put that here. Okay, so that you don't want anything to have with that happen or to have anything to do with that pool and you want it gone. Um, purchase price. Oh, down here, like, so you've got the, if there's a propane tank, uh, you want to find out about that, get more information, and see what your buyers and sellers intend to do. And usually I have a conversation with the listing agent if that's something that we have to negotiate. Okay. I have a question on that. Mm -hmm. I, I've never seen that. Is it super obvious? Is it no, but you'll know like where the, the heat source, if it's a uh, brand from a protein tank, and then usually the listing agent will say something like they have it filled every two years or whatever, it's possible. They just, you know, do you want it? Do you want to lease it? Do you want to shop around for your own company? Do you, you know, it's, it's a negotiation thing. But I don't, you don't sell it often and you have to be usually out for all areas. Okay. It's, yeah. it's not usually like Jefferson County. In Park City, in Park City where I'm from, it's almost always in the agent notes. Like there's a, you know, here's the filling company, here's how much it costs every time you fill it. Um, right here is everything to do with the loan terms. And I tell people another thing too is like, look guys, I really need your pre approval because on that first page of the contract, nobody's looking at offers right now without pre approval. And on that first page, right on that first page of the contract, it's got all the terms and I need to know how to fill that out. So you can't really be leaving all this empty if they haven't talked to a lender. And it's important that you understand uh, the information that that lender has given you. So the house is listed at 350 and we're offering 340. Like we're not getting this house. I'm just gonna... <laughs> not right now. <laughs> not in this market, but anyway. <laughs> so it's a good shot. Um, so we're gonna offer uh, 340,000. Our earnest money is going to be two thousand. Okay, and here's where you were talking about. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, David, I forgot that. Yeah. Okay, so I like to use hard figures just because when you're negotiating price, this twenty percent will change. What if they negotiate and they end up paying the thirty fifty? Well, twenty percent is going to be a lot more. Do they have that? Or if it's a specific, my people have fifteen thousand dollars. I would rather put that down than a than a percentage amount. Um, and it's cash, so they already have it in the bank account. Or maybe they sell the property already, and, and that's where the funds are coming from. If it's an equity line, um, a gift, other, and then if it's other, you might want to put, you know, put that here, uh, a 401k or something like that. Um, we'll draw that out here. The type of loan, conventional, did everybody have all this pretty much? Mm -hmm. Um, it's a 30 year fixed. The percentage is not to exceed five. Now, I know in your all's, um, in your pocket, it says what, four and a half? Yeah. So, so basically, because this fluctuates, this number, um, you want to give a little bit, like a lot of times I'll talk to the lender, which stuff in here? Well, they're going to probably lock in at four, but just go ahead and write five, because if it exceeds that, then technically they can get out of the contract. Um, and then would you normally put six? Well, I mean, depending on what it is. Like right here? Oh, to the left, where you can check six or what it is. That's one line. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I should have put six. Okay. Um, yes, but fix would be, and most right now, everybody's using fix. Can you check both of those boxes? Yes. <laughs> And then down here is where we're going to put the, the, they have five days. And like I said, you know, if it's a lender and these people have a freed up schedule, they could do it in two days, but not if it's a Friday afternoon and they get, 
you know, they get an accepted offer on Friday and they can't even talk to their owner until Monday. Um, that's already eaten up two days there. So you just want to kind of look at your calendar, look at your phone and be like, okay, they can get in there by next Thursday. So we're going to put this many days because technically the contract can fall through if they don't apply for the loan in the right amount of time. Okay. Uh, that selling agent could act and reach out and ask for proof that they've applied for the loan. And if, if it's we're on day six, uh, technically that's a, uh, that's an area they can back out. I wrote the word address here, believe me. My first two contracts I did by hand. You gotta write that address at the top of every page. <laughs> You're gonna be like, oh, this is for the bird. <laughs> so you learn real quick. I had to learn not lit for you know. I had to type it in because I got so sick of writing the address at the top of every page. Um, page two, this is where you write, they're pre-approved with ABC Mortgage, John Doe's their lender, and this is the uh, phone number. What I also do is, and you have more rain if you're typing, I also say a pre-approval letter will be furnished or attached. And then I reach out to that agent and say, I'm going to send it to you separately. I'm waiting on an update from the lender or the lender's going to, you know, whatever. She's updating it and I'll have it to you by the end of the weekend. That kind of thing. But if you have it, you can do it with the project. Yes, I do go ahead and send it. And then when I send a text, I will say to that listing agent, I'll say, I just sent you an offer with the seller's disclosure, the lead base paint, and the pre-approval letter all attached. Please verify that you received it. And that way they, they don't need anything else. They should have everything that they, they have. And um, now I'll sometimes explain, hey, I don't, I've got an old one. I've got an old pre-approval, they're getting it, you know, but here's their information. So if they wanna call the lender, they can. Um, if this is a, not a VA loan, you want to put NA here. Um, seller agrees to pay certain fees not to exceed. On a VA loan, the VA, uh, they're not allowed to pay for their own term on inspection. Okay. So this is a conventional, we can put in, NA there. If it were a VA loan, I would write like $75 in there. It, the, the, the term might, might only cost 50 or 60, but that way, and have to, to go over, you're still covered. Any questions on that? Yeah, a couple of questions actually on the, um, the lender deal. Mm -hmm. So first, as the buyer's agent, um, when you're getting, when you're updating the pre-approval letter, you're, are you getting them to update it to match the price that you're offering or do you have it a little bit higher to show that, you know, I guess there's two different schools of thought there. Mm -hmm. And you will learn a personal preference as you get into this business. Yeah. Most of the time I'll leave that blank. And my lenders that work with me a lot, they'll say, are we leaving this blank? Or do you want me to put a certain amount in there? Okay. Um, everybody, it's kind of one of those things where it's six of one, half a dozen of another, and you'll probably get 12 different answers if you talk to 12 different people yeah. here. If I get a blank letter, you know, and I know the lender and I'm familiar with them, Sam, the sell, I'm the seller, uh, then I just, I get a blank letter. If, if they're bidding on a house that's two, or they're bidding on a house that's 250 and they're created to 275, it's not like he's closing your poker hand. Oh, they can go up, we're gonna tell them, you know, we want to, you know. Right, right. So I did an offer this weekend, we bid uh, 260. I had to go ahead and get pre approval to 262. Um, I know it sounds crazy, just the longer you're in the business, if you know the agent on the other side, you'll get to where you kind of get a feel of what they're going to want to see. And that's what I present. I know that sounds weird, but um, most of the time I, I give a blank one. I mean, not a blank one, it's a pre approval letter, but it doesn't have to have, have and it'll say conventional loan, VA, MHA, but I don't usually have them put them out in there. Um, because again, I had, if they want to have a conversation and it's that concerning, I've provided all the information they need and they're welcome to call the lender themselves. But I just don't want to expose that they can actually go up $25,000 more. Um, any questions on that? Here's where you put uh, the earnest money to be held by Keller Williams Louisville East. I've, I've probably had 1% of the people ever bought the kids. There's some old school realtors out there and they're usually in Gold County and they want to hold it 
but, um, but for the most part, keep it here and, unless they say, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just, you know, one of those things. Um, for a transaction involving a lender, it's going to have to appraise. Okay, usually we only waive the appraisal if it's cash. And again, I, I know we're running out of time and we're out of time. So I'm just kind of hitting the basics. We could argue and go through different scenarios on all these, but I don't want to. I mean, that's a different class for a different day. Uh, nowadays, you're seeing people are waiving the appraisal, and which means that they agree to, let's say they bid 5,000 over on the house and they waive the appraisal. That means if it doesn't appraise, whatever, they will pull that money out of their pocket and pay more than the house is worth. Okay, I don't advise that, but we're seeing it more. Um, down here is where you ask for your home warranty. $550, um, the seller agrees to pay and the buyer's gonna take it out. Does everybody have that okay? Um, since we're out of time, is there sp anything specific that I've gotta hit? Do you all understand it? The, the, sell, um, the seller's disclosure, this is very important. Make sure that they sign that seller's disclosure first. So I send it, especially if it's electronically, I will send that to them first because it automatically puts a date stamp and time on there. I don't want them to sign my, my contract saying that they've seen the seller's disclosure and then the date stamp and time on the seller's disclosure is like after this, you know, even if it's five few minutes. So that's my proof that I'm going to check that they've seen it because they signed it before they signed the contract. Does that make sense? It does. And, and to that end, the buyer initial money page? Yes. Do you send that with the offer or send it once it's an accepted offer? No, you have the buyer will sign and it will, they will initial every page. Once it's done. When you present it. Yeah, like before, and they're going to sign off on everything and then you send it over to the seller. Yes. Um, and if you do things electronically, it will automatically populate do that for you. Uh, this house was built before 1978, which means you need a base bank. bank. Inspection of the property. Uh, this is a whole lot of stuff right here that I don't have time to get into. If they're buying it as is and they're okay, you want to go ahead and put number one. If real, they, if they, quick on that lead paint, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, the the days in there, fifteen uh -huh. and three. What what do you normally put in those days? Mm -hmm. uh, if you scroll up to that uh, number 138, here it's got the blanks for the day. Buyer has blanks. Da, da, da. Oh, what, I'm sorry. What do you oh, put in those days? I chose number one. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause it's, that's the and you think is it's number one better? Yeah. I mean, I've never had anybody want to challenge that. It, yeah. it, if it's a really, really, really old home, they know it's an historical home, and I explained to them that the buyer comes up that any house built before 1978 and, and had not had any doors or windows replaced, there's a chance that uh, it has lead based paint. And do you understand? And a lead based paint is only harmful if you ingest it. So right. don't sit down and chew on it. Get some food if you're hungry. So you, just, you just check B and leave one or two empty. So, yes. Okay. Um, for the most part, now if they're all consumed about that and they're, they're getting ready to tear a house apart and blah, 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 we can go over the options. Everything is just you need to have it done quick and have it done fast. Sure. My, sure. I've never had anybody say they wanted to take the money to have that. If it's a rehab, they're taking everything out anyway. Or even if it's a really old home, most of them have had doors and windows replaced. If it's 120 years old, they it's probably had. You know, and that's usually where you see that old lead based paint. You don't need to check on this Um, I just, I, yeah, I usually do okay. that one. Um, Thank you. Sorry. No, no problem. It's because they didn't specify. Like, it would have said on here that they wanted, yeah, the lead based inspect inspections are new, but they would have took. Yeah, that's, it's, yeah, it, for sure on that. If they want to have one done, yeah. it's kind of a given that. Most people don't know most people know. Because they the seller already signed saying that they weren't aware. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um this is real quick. We asked for 15 days to do our get our inspections done. Most days most people don't want you to go that long. You might have to during the summer, but in the fall, spring, and winter months where it's less uh, less busy, you should be able to get it done in eight or ten 
and then you've got three days <clears throat> to hear a response from the seller, three days to counter. And a lot of times that only happens, you only take that long. If it's something crazy like some major stuff, they've got to get um, they've got to get somebody in there to give them an estimate, you know, through foundation cracks or something. And sometimes they'll even write back and, and, and say, hey, we can't get this done in three days. Would your buyer agree to extend the, you know, I've got to get up companies in here. All the good ones are booked. <laughs> they are all the good reasonable ones. Sometimes they can't get out there in a day or two. And we're really trying to make this right, but I have no idea what this is going to cost. Yeah. So the best part about all of this is communication. As long as you're moving forward and everybody's trying to go forward on that contract, you know, you do the three day and the three day. One comes down to that one day, maybe they come back with something. Then you come back. As long as you're pushing forward, as long as everybody's working together, and you know wants to stay in the contract then you know you've got a little bit of wiggle room on how fast to be able to respond you get the most important thing is just communication oh yeah just a question um like you just said if they have to get an estimate or something out there mm -hmm. do you make an agenda or just the contract or do you let the verbal expansion i mean from what i, I do heard, okay yeah, because if it's not right, it doesn't exist. And you can say, and then they come back, blah, blah, blah. And you know, you've got a text message, but I'll say, I'll go ahead and shoot you something over that we're giving you until Monday at five o'clock to get the rest of your yada yada stuff. So again, you have it in writing, it just doesn't, it covers everybody. It's better to be safe than sorry. Um, no, I'm whipping through that. I'm sorry, we're going over. And does everybody understand this? Mm -hmm. 30 to 40 days. And like I said, if you've got a trusted lender who works on the weekends like we do, who has been in the business for a long time, ask them for a specific date. How are things going? Are we are we backed up? Can you get a, can this conventional loan done in 30 days? I want to put a specific date in there. Look at your calendar. Put a specific date. That's going to be strong. We're very strong instead of this, this range right here. Um, and then we're giving them delayed possession, five o'clock. And this is a number you can pick. It could be noon, it could be four o'clock, it could be six. Um, you know, that's just up to you and your buyer and the seller. Did they need a whole day? Did they, you know, work schedule's weird. Maybe they work better shift, they need a day, and then they don't get up till noon. You know, it's just all about communication. <laughs> Really, it is, you know, and, and most everybody's kind of flexible. Uh, and then you put your three days here. Did everybody have that? Okay. Um, could be two days, could be one, could be none. I tried, I try not to, unless uh, the, the one time you're going to need it, like I've got a transaction going on right now. You know, if you've got a domino and there's four houses got to get closed on the day. You know, somebody's buying your people's house, your, your people are buying, and then the people that they're buying from are buying. Not everybody's getting their furniture out the same day. It's just, it is what it is. So I'll go ahead and write to, they try not to take that. Um, ideally, somebody's got a uh, empty house somewhere, and it's not like, you know, but, uh, you know, you know it's, it's gone different ways, but you just have to be mindful of that. You know, get a pod, the same story, are they gonna live with somebody? But if everybody's given possession, you know, if you're closing at 10, 12, 2, and 4 that day, and everybody's given possession that day, everybody's going to have their you know, all the park yard and borders. It gets big and ugly. So somebody needs two days to, you know, it just, it happens. See what you got to do to get the deals done. Uh, seller wants that there are no leases. If, if they're, you know, if it's an investment property and rental, and rental or renters are in there, um, you're, you're going to check B. They're taking up, you know, somebody you're buying it in July and the lease is good till July or till December. Um, there's and the lease is going to carry over to the new owner. You're going to check B if it's a single family house, nobody's living in it's your main, you know, house. You're going to check A. Real quick on that one, uh, house in the country when you were in the interstate, we had to rewrite a contract on the my dad's property because there's a lease for a billboard. No, oh, really, and I was thinking like tenant leases, right. But it's a billboard leak, so we had to go back and rehab all that stuff back in there. That's fine. That's yeah. interesting. This right here, if I am the seller's agent, this is horrific. 
What I want to see here is nothing. Yeah. Nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing. I want to see a big giant NA that's scrolling on. But no, we don't have that too. <laughs> you can put, and here's where you dress anything else, your other provisions. Seller to pay $10,000 for his buyer's closing costs and free price. Yeah. I mean, it does happen on higher end houses. But ideally, what you can see here is the DNA because the buyer's asking for nothing. And if you've got multiple offers and a whole bunch of stuff written here, this ain't going to fly. I mean, <laughs> right. All right. Uh, so this is where you put seller to pay $10,000 for the buyer's closing costs and prepay. The next thing is buyer must close on a current home at 123 Main Street, which is already under contract. Okay. I'll put that here. And I also put offers contingent upon spouse viewing the property and viewing the home in three days and giving approval. That's a whole lot of things. Again, on a hiring home, it's a little more, it might be a little more common, COVID, people being out of town, being people transferring jobs. But right now, first time home buyers at 250 and under, things are sliding off the wall. You don't want to see anything here. Okay, the reason why I didn't check contingent on sale closing a buyer's property. Um, uh, my, my property is already under contract and we've had the, uh, per, the, the uh, appraisal order. Okay, I let them know that up here because if you get familiar with the contingent of sale and closing a buyer's uh, contract, it says this is the day we're going to list it. It says this is how long we have to put it on the market, you know. It, it lines up for a property that's not on the market yet. Okay. So you see that they might be on food. Yeah. So again, I had that conversation say, hey, my people are ready to go. They're through inspections. We worked through it. Appraisal got ordered on Friday. I got to find them a house or they're going to be, you know, so I've had that conversation with the listing agent. This down here on the contingent sale, the addendum, it, it says, hey, uh, I have, the listing paperwork signed, the pictures are being taken on Saturday, we're gonna list it on Monday, and you're trying to get an accepted offer on Friday. Okay, so that's a lot further down in the process than your people are ready to move and have a ready to go buyer that's already under contract. Yeah. If you've just accepted an offer but there hasn't been an inspection or anything like that, mm -hmm. would you check the box? I guess we're in the process to yeah, the when when you're getting ready to list it. Like it's not on the market yet. Because it says how many days before this house is on the market. Um, uh, so when it's on the market, you just put it in the in the open market. So yeah, when I or like say we just that day got something, you know, I might go ahead and use that addendum if it's real fresh. But if I'm further along, like we're probably 15 days from closing, then I just go ahead and address it up here. And then I'll have that conversation with the listing agent, you know. Uh, the 48 hour or 24 hour right of refusal. And again, that's another conversation. But, uh, you know, basically my house just needs to close. We don't have to, you know, we're halfway through the process and it's not a matter of when am I going to list this house. So if you look at that contingency addendum and get real familiar with what that says and what that addresses, and you'll get a little better about when you need, when you need to use it. Um, and if this is a condo, you would probably check out the HOA addendum, right? And you would yes, if it was a condo. Now, so a good listing agent already has all that in the in the documents. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not trying to fish around and say, what's going on with, I need to see all the paperwork for the HOA. A good listing agent, one that's on top of their game, they've provided all that. For the community. Yeah. And yeah. um, if they have it, then we need to see the HOA documents. Um, the late possession agreement, it, you know, uh, I had some people go ahead and close, and they they got a month, they had a month in there. It explains that they agree to have renters insurance, you know, uh, everything. It's a, it's very detailed. So if it's over a day or two, I would fill out the debt the late possession agreement. Um, I wouldn't unless everybody in the parties wants that. Uh, there's no wrong as far as like if you said and you included it, then that's fine too. Okay. But it really predicts, predicts it, I can't even find out. It protects uh, for a really long term, you know, like the condition of the house and uh, that they have to carry renter's insurance, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. 
Um, and then right here is where you're going to tell that they have 5 p.m. on the next day. Um, and you get your signatures. Okay. Um, a lot of people, I hate to say this, but they're lazy about that. Don't be one of those listing agents. Oh, it's 5.15, I'm getting it to you. <laughs> you know, that wears on me. Like, don't be on top of your game. Be your job, be your rational. People, I mean, and I just, I, you know, I hate, to, they're just agents. I'll just say, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and stereotype you. This is the truth, I can tell you. There are agents out in the country. I'm gonna tell you, you have to deal with agents like in list of town. They're so laid back. Yeah, uh -huh. I was getting that too. You know, they're just like, they're what today? Around that like, you don't, you know, you're not gonna help with it. Yeah. yeah, I'm just like, but they're all, they're, they're like, and they, we have that reputation. Those agents in Louisville, man, they're just rush, rush, rush. You know, we're like, yeah, we're having to be like this. And they just take their time. Mm -hmm. I had one over the deal, and it was Sunday. And yeah, we're, we're working on it. I mean, it's just, they're so laid back. It's like, do we have to write in here anywhere? Um, it says that this is my sister. So do I need to write that I am the buyer's relative? Um, no. Who just disclosed that to the if other If you were a listing agent, you have to disclose that you're representing somebody that has a only on a listing. Yeah. Okay. If it's the buyer, see, I took the stance here that it was just my client. Okay. Uh, offers contingent upon spouse viewing the property and viewing the house in three days. So okay. they're your client. Okay. It doesn't matter. You know, but legally, like you know, if you reveal that, that's fine. But legally on a listing, that's like you'll get flagged and you can get in trouble. You have to say, you know, fire it. Or it, like, I think I just uh, closed my first flip, but we were partners on it. So we had to disclose, you know, that the seller has a vested interest in this, you know, sorry, LLC. Okay. Okay. You have to disclose all that. It's our property, you know, buyer or seller is related to sellers, that kind of thing, but there's no, I mean. And then for homeowner's warranty, I have 200 contacts right now and that's written in both. Mm -hmm. How do I go about, do I just send them a list like I did the inspectors? Like here's a list so if they contact them, like how's that work? And so uh, there's a bunch of painlets, I don't know if you have them up here. What I do is I've gotten very familiar over the years with the different types of company, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, I have preference. I'll talk to them about their options. Basically, usually my clients just trust me. And if there's one area that I know they're like the air conditioning and it's the middle of July, there's some companies out there they'll get you up in a hotel until like you get somebody out to look at it. So you just get real familiar with and a lot of these guys will take you lunch, dinner, Starbucks, Talk to them. We have them in here at Colorado a lot and just say, hey, what this 210, what's this first American, what this, you know, what's your all strength? What's it, you know, and they're going to want to sell you on their company and you'll use somebody until they do your people wrong or you have a bad experience or you can't get a hold of them. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Who are yours out here? I use first American almost for, for everything. Uh, both sides company, I think. Think of the company on the top of my head, that, that, um, um, but they put people up in a hotel, like if their if their age five goes out, and you kind of want to look at what's covered under each plan, and then how much you know who has the lowest. Um, um, yes, did I go? I'm sorry, my brain's kind of fried. But you know, I just talk to them, and then most of them, it's kind of I learned the word peach. Okay, you know. I say typically what's covered, and I'll make sure I do my homework and learn. But I'll say in most cases it's plumbing, electrical appliances, cooling, and heating. And okay, that's that's okay. huge. So you know there might be some other things out there, but that's your general. Usually nothing on the roof. It's hard to cover roofs. Um, but yeah. And like I said, it's, it's, if I've had issues about people getting out, if I call them, I, you know, your good people are just like your good lenders and your good realtors. Uh, they're on vacation range on the phone and they have somebody covering their business. 
So we have, you know, not just, I've had the best luck with all the touch smacking. And, but the beginner's pamphlets all out here. Okay. Now, as far as ordering, that's what I have an admin. I don't have to, I turn the contract into her. And, uh, so if it says that the seller will pay for what it's chosen by the buyer, if I have the buyer, if my admin contacts them, orders it, uh, gets a receipt, and we go to closing with that receipt. And the attorney has to have a copy of it too, that the, that the home warranty's been ordered, and I provide them a packet of closing. But that's something you're so I do that part. So oh, that's okay. um, correct. Okay. Is there anything else I do? Because I, I don't really. <laughs> um, like I have the appraisal right now on both of them. Um, um, now my one buyer, she is the lender, so that's kind of made my life easy. Yeah. Uh, the other lady though is totally clueless with my roommate. Mm -hmm. So. Is there anything else I need to do other than this home warranty deal? Um, it, it just depends, and that's a whole. I mean, if you want to have, come have a conversation with me, the, I have an evidence. They're a contract to close. Once I get them on a contract, I mean, I know now because I've been in the business long enough. But what needs to communicate be communicated to you know the uh, the title should have already been ordered. Um, you know, if it's your friend, I know my the lender that. takes care of that, that you want to be conscious of. You, you kind of have to be the person that makes sure that nothing's falling through the cracks. You know, everybody's going to blame a realtor. It doesn't matter. It just is a fact. But the lender plugs up, the home warranty, a closing attorney, it still just falls back on you. And if these people have a smooth transaction, they're going to want to use you again. If they don't, they're, they're just going to blame you. You're either great or not. You know, it's like there's no in between. You either hung the moon and they're gonna love you to the day they die, or they're, you know, it's just, we get the brunt of all of it. We get the glory or the flames, and it's, you know, it's not always fair. Michelle, do y'all know Michelle that sits back here? And she's right across, she's right in this corner. If you come out and she faces that back wall, she's right across from my office. She does the contract to close her probably. 20 people in this office. That's all she does. She's a licensed agent, but she will take care of your business each transaction for $250. That might be something until you get used to the process. I like it's not even told you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But Did she. You know I, I've met Michelle, and so she explains kind of what she does. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't want to go that way, route, she. She's really busy right now, I know, but she might block out some time to have a conversation with you about um, um, what she does and what that looks like. And that's the great thing about Keller Williams. Most of us around here will share everything we have. She has checked, she does everything out of old school. She has it in the computer, but she has paper copies too, and she has checklists. And she she would probably more be more than willing to share that with you. I me. mean, I'm fine to do it. I just yeah, know what to do. Yeah, but it's you know it's a definite process, and then once you, it's it's all fun and games when you got to. I'm on a team. When I get six pending, I almost can't breathe, and I have people helping me because if something falls through the cracks, like you go one day over your repairs, I mean it just it it gets very scary, and I don't like that all that. So, um, you know, you might say you might figure out early on how many you can handle by yourself. And then once your business starts picking up, it's like, hey, I, I do the first four, and then when I go over that, I hire Michelle for one to two. And just until you get down your system. Right. Um, yeah, because I would like to learn it, like, yeah. some contract clubs. I don't want to just join a team and not ever know that side of it. Yeah. And, and it was good for me. Like, it just helped me, um, you know, that first year when you're trying to learn everything. It was good that I had an admin every day I could come in and sit down and pull up a chair and she showed me everything she was doing. You know, back then we're trying to get away from Gottlieb, but I was trying to learn Gottlieb, I was trying to learn to be a realtor, I was trying to learn to, <laughs> who a good lender was, I was trying to learn home warranties, I was trying to learn contracts, and you just feel so overwhelmed at first that it was good to have, I could come in and flop down by my admin and say, say, what's happening today with this? Or what, you know, you're sending out emails and they're telling me why and they're showing you time frames and, and all, all I need, that. I need to get to know this But yeah, <laughs> she's awesome. She's got like 60 pennies right now. I don't know how she, uh, well, that's what she does. You know, that's, she's contacted. 
contact you close for a couple of teams back here in the corner. Several, several individuals. Okay. And they just, but you will learn. I didn't know that was offered for an yeah. individual. Yeah, you will learn real quick what your same limit is. And again, yeah, I get six or right seven, and I'm like, it, so. <laughs> yeah, well, I get six or seven, and I'm like, uh, something needs to close. Because you're just dealing with so many people, and they're on your phone app, and I'm just right. like, uh, and that's on a team. If I was individualized, that's not what I would do. So. But everybody has their own threshold. I know somebody that she's individual, does everything herself, and she keeps about 10 in her contract. I can sleep at night, but again, everybody's different. Ways. Right. Okay. And you're not your business, but it's just good to know that probably way we offer support. You're not in it by yourself. And I hope you guys feel free. Uh, stick your head, walk around, get to know everybody, stick your head in, introduce yourselves. I mean, that's because after a while, when you come in, and I know this COVID thing kind of throwing a wrench in it, but we're just kind of a family. And sometimes it's nice to have people, even when you're having a rough time or a bad day, they'll stick their head in and check on you and just say, you've been quiet. I haven't seen you for two days. Are you okay? Do you need anything? You need me to go get you a, you know, a cup of coffee? You know, just whatever. Because there'll be times that it's going to be so stressed out, you're going to be in tears. And I'm not, you probably dealt with Katie for, and she does a lot of good business. So I, I don't know. I'm sure she can relate to some of this, but you're going to have, it's a problem because so there are days and nothing's going right and nothing. Like, okay, every deal I got is going through. And then the next day I get referrals and people are texting me and they come by the house and they came out of the, you know, the blue and we worked out a contract and we made it through and we're going to close and, you know, and everything's going right. So it's just emotional. Yeah. So it's good to have a support system here. We have Amy and Vicki at the front desk. She used to be the admin on our team. And uh, she's a licensed agent. Everybody can really relate to. Laura's a licensed agent. Everybody on the staff here, they know what you're going through. They know the emotional, the ups and downs. And sometimes you just need to sit down and then you're almost in tears. And everybody can relate. You know, so yeah, and Amy's already gotten that for me. She's been <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, it's awesome. And most of them, you know, I have their personal cell phone. If I need to text or you know their email, <clears throat> just reach out and say I have a moment. And, and I'm gonna tell you, I've been in this. Uh, I got licensed in November of 15, so it'll be five years. Uh, I mean, it's a, probably every five months, three. Four or five months, it depends on how much I'm going to. I'll question if I want to stay in this industry. <laughs> it's just, you know, God, am I in the right thing? You know, it's it's just, it, it's the nature of the beast. And then when you go to some of these experienced people that have been in it 25 years, like Tango, she'll say, Welcome to real estate. <laughs> <laughs> and he's so even killed, nothing stresses him out. He keeps the same tone, and he's just like, you know, so sometimes the great thing about him and his wife, Karen, they're very, they're both licensed agents. And sometimes I just need to call and be like, Whoa, da, 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 da. and they're like, Yeah, I know. We're here for you. <laughs> they just keep me calm, you know, and I just need to speak. And then 15 minutes later, I'm, I'm like, I'm better, I'm over it. I just need to get that out. <laughs> so that's what I do, Dave. Anybody. Was this helpful? I'm sorry yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah. You guys wouldn't have been ready yeah. if you had to no, wait. It's, not, it's a lot. Like you said, yeah. it's just practice, 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 practice. Thank you so much. Thank and you. I remember freaking out like if you all, when you had your first closing, like I didn't want my people to know it was my first closing. Yeah. That was another thing. I did have to tell the lawyer. I went in and like, sat in the wrong I'm place. I'm okay. <laughs> and that's probably funny to you now. That, yeah, it is funny. So I go in the borders, like, I don't know where people sit. And like the agent on the other side, she was so great. I don't know if you, if you ever get a chance to look at the other. She said the other color way. And her name's Kathy Wolfer. And uh, like, I went in and sat down, and she's like, don't sit there. <laughs> she knew. And I was trying to hide it from my people.
know that takes a couple of weeks usually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. I was thinking of the other Yeah, thing. I was like, no, I just meant, like, how does it go? Like, <laughs> that's that's right. Right. And you're just going to think like, everybody on these says we could write a book. I could write a book. Like I sat at the closing table, but my buyers did not show. And I sat there for two hours and I was blowing up their phone and the closing agent, I mean, the closing attorney was blowing up their phone. They were, were these people, they were involved in everything. They went to the appraisal. They went to the inspection. They went to everything. And they didn't show up at the closing table. Long story short, they had borrowed money from a hard money lender here in town that don't play games like they would end up in a body bag. And like they owned a, a quickie mark way down Broadway, like on 26th Street or something. Anyway, uh, he had gotten locked up. Oh. I was like, I guess I wasn't his one phone call. But anyway, so I'm at the closing table and the sellers, you can imagine, and I'm having a face down. And I'm like, I don't know where they're at. But three days later, we found them. He had been, she had filed domestic uh, abuse charges. Wow. He was on, he had gotten arrested and then was on house lockdown. She flew off to Illinois. Like, there's nothing, you, you just think you can't make this stuff up. You're like, oh my gosh, like, it didn't close. I mean, the house right, was back on the market. Um, I didn't get my commission to get all the way to the closing table. That's oh, frustrating. Gosh. I had somebody, we were through, um, through appraisal and he passed away, got cancer like that and like had the fire and then like, that's how he like passed away. Like, I came in, I was on Angels came in, I came in, I was like crying, I needed a hug. But that was just sad. How sad was that? And I had to deal with, you know, that family. Like, I had a client as a contract and couldn't, we couldn't get the closing table because he passed away that time. It was like crazy. So, Mary Ann, if y'all don't know her, watch her videos. She's a nut job. Mary Ann Rich, she sits right there. She puts videos on Facebook. She, they've gone back for years. I used to just roll and she'd be, they'd be hysterical. She'd be in Disney World and find a, a phone book and say she was Lee Bennett from Disney World. I mean, they're just stupid, but they're funny. <laughs> and uh, gosh, I mean, she's got a story for everything. And she's found snake. You know, like, she had somebody video on her and she's crawling in all spaces. And, oh, it's just, crazy mess but the most thing is is you guys are on a great team just stay connected everybody's here here has been where you've been and so when you get stressful when you're happy times and sad times you just want a support team around you to rejoice and cry <laughs> all that all that great stuff so stick it out tell the is a good place and uh I'm Thank you so much. It was nice to meet you all. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Tell your wife, I need her. Thanks, guys, for coming. I'm going to face to face. How did she like? Is she fair or feral? Do y'all have big, big? Uh, We're both born and raised in Louisville, and it's, so it's mostly sphere. Yeah, it's a little bit lucky. And I've got a really good family on both wow. sides, so oh, wow. that helps too. Yeah. But yeah, pretty much. I mean, we do some marketing, but not. It's not we don't have like a huge budget. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that's the best kind of thing to do. That or like a referral. If somebody refers you, you know, they're gonna stick with you usually. Mm -hmm. It's not like that's a low lady or a, Right. Yeah. And I've learned that because since I'm now just getting started in it full time, mm -hmm. I've tried to bring in leads from like the Zillow and Facebook stuff and got like you said, it's like mm -hmm. it's a different world. It is. Trying to reel them in. But, See, I mean, uh, you know, you really have to know scripts and how to get to the point. Yeah. You know, uh, get them to a lender without seeing, freaking them out, seeing them too pushy. And, right. Uh, yeah, it's a different. They usually have crazy experiences and not come from sphere or referrals, to say the least. It's been those kind of. Really? You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. those kind of Gosh, glad to have you guys here too. Yeah. I know she came from the other, um, yeah, the other Keller Williams. So yeah, we love. She has loved it here so far, and so have I. You know, from the little 
Hey baby, how are you, sweetheart? I'm sorry, baby. I was in training. Oh, 
Oh, that's so much fun. I'm so sorry I couldn't answer. I felt so bad. Do you want to say hi to um, Jonesy and her mommy in my office? Yeah. Okay. Hi. Try calling you. Oh, 